There we are. We are recording now. So welcome to your next live tell class. Um, and here are again notes for a successful class. Take paper, take a pen and paper. I don't know how much you take notes during these classes, um, but but it does sometimes spark an idea. Um, mm -hmm. When you write things down, it's a different way. Uh, it sometimes sparks an idea. So it's a good idea. You don't have to be aware of your classmates at this point because you don't have it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, since you're the only one. And then for this slide, it's uh, the whole thing is about being aware of your classmates. Again, don't worry mm -hmm. about that. Um, you don't you don't have to raise your hand uh, <laughs> at this particular point. You can just talk. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you. know that you will have a final project at the end of this. It will be required. Um, and I'm going to get you on a, there's nothing for you to do, but I, I spoke with our registrar yesterday and uh, I will get this class onto the, the system for um how Tell keeps track of everything and the and the the final project, all of these things uh, we are going to be. They've changed their system quite a lot in the last six okay. months. So okay. um, again, no, nothing for you to worry about. Nothing extra for you to do. Um, I will be working on that also, getting okay. us organized. So okay. let's begin. Let's start with the prayer, please. Okay, question. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to a new day, since we are, Opio and I both, just starting our day. Um, we pray that you be with us with all the, the, the things we have to do today. You've given us good work to do. And I know Opio is, is so excited also for the work. In fact, he would like, should I dare ask, he would like a little bit more work to do um well it, th those are in your hands too for now we ask you to bless our efforts for the next hour hour and 15 minutes something like that so that we are able to better understand the biblical principles of church planting how was it done at the time of saint paul how was it done uh, at the time of jesus himself and how do you want us to do it now, how do you want us to do it in Malawi? How do you want us to do it in uh, Ethiopia and Gambella? Um, well, we're we're eager to see. Help us to understand. Help us to ask questions. Help us to be clear in our in our talking. Um, and we just ask your Spirit to be in the middle of all of this, so that we uh, can grow in our faith and our love for understanding. Uh, and, and our love for you and our understanding of how we can serve you better. For your glory. Amen. 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 Okay. On Saturday morning, we studied the doctrine of the church. Today is Tuesday. We're doing biblical princes for principles for church planters. Um, Matthew 28. And that's a short section, but we have some other readings at the end of our lesson we'll, so we'll get in some other passages too then next saturday will be church planting questions one and two next week tuesday a week from today lesson four church planting questions five more church planting questions lesson six mistakes so this will be the week after next mistakes in church planting and then number seven review and conclusion so that's where we're going uh, today, Biblical Principles for Church Planters. The goal of this class to teach uh, participants to apply biblical principles for church planting. So um, already some of this you may have done because, I mean, you've got a congregation. Um, so maybe... Maybe this is information that you will teach to the guys that you work with, the other leaders. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. this is information you look back and you say, oh, 
we were supposed to do this and we didn't do it. Or, oh, we did it this way, but it would be better if we revise. And so those kinds of things, maybe you can apply a little bit to a bobo and a pinudo um, <clears throat> as you get those congregations more and more active. But anyway, this will be interesting um, in your particular context because um, you have already developed a group. So maybe it's review. Maybe it will confirm. Maybe it will change your thinking. Anyway, we'll see. You know the TEL program, Think, Evaluate, Learn, and Lead. So yeah. we won't spend time with that. Let's go and let's think about what's coming up in our lesson today. Can you read this question? Yes. Do you see it on the screen? Yes, yeah, it's, it's visible to me. I okay. need to to correct, check uh, the... Or if you want me to read it, I can, not a problem. No, I can't, but I, I need to to adjust the the camera cam, camera flash e Okay. We cover the yeah, now I, I do it, okay. There you are. Voila. Okay. So uh say before we begin making practical practical plan for the for the church planting process, we should focus on the biblical principle. For our look, what what made some of those important principles be? So I think what they're asking is your own thinking. You know, when mm -hmm. you started up the congregation there at Cambella, how did you do it? What direction did you get from Scripture for that? Remember that? Some of yeah, we, yeah. Like we, when we we began uh, to plant uh, the church. Here, uh, in Candela, yes, as we already we we are Christians, and also we are uh, preachers. In that time, we are Bengalis. So the thing which is uh, come to our mind is the just to prepare the principle. How can we establish what church we need to uh, 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 to plant? What is the difference between our church and others' church? Yeah. That is the question which is come to our mind and that's why we uh try uh to find the different uh the thing which is make our church different from others so when we stand from that what we we chose uh, already to uh to find the true teachings according to the uh Lutheran uh to the Luther uh uh according to night pipe thesis and again the what come to our mind because our city our regions already are corrupted by Paul's teachings and the community are then leading to misleadings uh in order to focus on the word of God people are already give a time for purpose and give a time for some things and when you see the leader also they are uh doing their job uh, looking for the benefits they need to become rich so the thing come to our mind is to is the is a thing to back to the word of god and I that would. is uh, uh, the what make make us uh, our church different like others that's why we stand from that to find, to create the principle how can we uh manage the the church how can we proclaim the gospel how can we uh, lead the the group, lead the the congregation. Excellent. So as the our, our topic today, uh, 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 mentions, yeah, that is exactly the the biggest point. What we already also done in the past. Right, right. Um, always go back to the Bible. Always go back yeah. to the Bible. Yeah, that's great. excellent. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and that is just, okay, so that's where we're starting. That's where we're starting. 
Now we'll hear some other ideas, um, or maybe just we'll confirm um, what you already know. So let's look at this Bible verse. It's in Matthew chapter 20. Yeah. Um, and who are the characters in this story? Yeah, uh, uh, and this story uh, we will see. We will say maybe the, uh, uh, the we will say the character uh, will be the disciples, uh, yeah. and 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 Jesus himself. So we see disciple and Jesus. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, Opio. I just want to double check. Yeah, twenty eight. I said at Matthew twenty, but it's not twenty. It's twenty eight. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. I understand. So you, yeah, it's Matthew, Matthew 20, 28, but yeah. is 16 to, uh, to 20. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, this is the Great Commission. It is the, the disciples and the 11 uh, remaining disciples. And the Bible actually is interesting, the, the, the very beginning of this section the 11 disciples because sometimes if it says jesus disciples you don't know if it's the 11 or if it's you know a hundred of them so yeah. good uh good emphasis there um and jesus yeah exactly that's the only ones at this event yeah. um how about objects in this story yeah i think the object uh as Jesus is spoke to the uh, eleven disciples uh, around the Galilee, I think we can say that the the uh, we can say the mountains, which they they are uh, sitting uh, on it. Uh, uh, after when they are waiting for Jesus' ascension uh, to events. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't, there isn't much uh, in this one. It's just the mountain that they, you know, the land they were on, they were standing on is the only real reference to an object. Okay, yeah. uh, maybe this will be a little bit, well, you answered this already. Where did this story happen? Yeah, I think. They still, yeah, I, I mentioned already, say, up in Galilee. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the mountain in Galilee. And yeah. this answer also goes, read this answer, Opio. If you can see this, I think it's interesting okay. when they have put it together. Okay, yeah. On a, on a mountain in, in, in Galilee, before his death and resurrection, Jesus told his disciples that he will go ahead of them to Galilee. After his resurrection, he sent a reminder to them through the woman who come to the tomb. Yeah. So he adds a little bit of information from, you know, what happened between his mm -hmm. resurrection and now this time. Uh, it gives a little bit of information um, that he, he told his disciples, I'll meet you there. Yeah. Uh, good. When did this story happen? Yeah, I think uh, exactly I think we can say this story happened uh, AD 30. Yeah, I think AD 30. AD 30, uh, the, uh, uh, when Jesus rose from the dead in, 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 in the morning of, of, of Monday. In the morning of, of Monday. Uh, okay, I think this story happened, it's not on the Monday, but I think after uh, 40 days when Jesus uh, rest from the dead 40 day to 50 uh, around because we we know Jesus when he rest from the dead he been living for 50 days yeah by sending himself to the disciple and yeah. remind them about what he is he, he, he spoken to them before yeah. he, he died it, in so, fact i i just ran into this bible passage in 1 Corinthians 15 where it says that he showed himself to like 500 people. So mm -hmm. he was very busy during those 40 days visiting with people and so on. 
Um, what's interesting to me is, is how this is or is not connected with the ascension. I think we have other places that talk about how Jesus was talking to his disciples and then as he was blessing them, he started to ascend to heaven. But this particular in Ma Matthew doesn't talk about the ascension. So it's kind of an interesting thing, but I think you're, what you're saying is, is right. Um, this is just after Jesus rose from the dead, probably 40 days. Um, as we look at other Bible passages, uh, it seems to be this great commission comes about the time that he ascended into heaven. So that would be 40 days. Yeah. Um, the, 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 and this is an interesting thing. You, you, uh, you kind of mentioned 50 days. 50 days is up to Pentecost. And those both of those events are very close to uh, you. Yeah, you, you are exactly. Yeah, the yeah. 50, 50 already, yes. Even the 50 day is the day which Jesus already uh, uh, ascension to events. Yeah. That's why uh, they call uh, uh, the Pentecost, day of Pentecost. Uh, so I think this is uh, uh, early before 50 days uh, right. when the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Ah, there you go. Yeah, right, right. Okay. More details about this story. What is the problem that you see in this story? What do you think is the problem here? Yeah, the problem, I think we can say uh, some uh, people or some disciples uh, are adopt, adopt the, for the uh, resurrection of Jesus. There is most of the, the more, there is most of them among them the most people uh, or disciple uh, believe and uh, uh, believe in Jesus resurrection but others are dropped like are he rest from the dead uh, exactly so the problem is dropped uh, about the resurrection of Jesus I think so I think so um, doubt doubt is the one that's talked about in the in the um, text itself, but I wonder because this is where this is where Jesus is sending them out. Now I have a job for you to do, and I wonder if there was something in the disciples' mind saying, "So now what? Now what are we supposed to do?" Uh, maybe they didn't really know. That's probably not a very good answer because I'm just kind of guessing. Um, at what they could be thinking, but doubt, I think, is the biggest problem. Can you read the answer here? Yeah, the biggest problem was that Jesus was about to leave the disciple behind, who then will tell the people about the kingdom of Eben. A second problem was that, that some of the disciples still adopt that Jesus was alive. Yeah. So th this identifies both problems, although the one, the doubt mm -hmm. is the one that's identified in the text. Yeah. But the other one is also true. You know, uh, it, it, I'm thinking about when you and I visited in Addis together with uh, Otong and uh, Ochala and Atrot Baj, uh, when, when we were together there, I think... Uh, I gave you some projects here. You you need to do this. You need to fill out these forms, which you've done. Uh, you need to, you know, be in the devotion, be in the word of God. When you leave, you give something to do. Uh, so I think that's what Jesus is doing. So the, the disciples will, will have some work to do. Yeah. Yeah. But doubt is a big issue for, I mean, for all of us. Okay. Excellent. Good, good, good. Now tell the story. You've already told it, maybe, but go ahead and and tell what you remember from this. Yeah, uh, I think that story is the Jesus already erased from the dead, and when he erased from the dead, he met with disciple, and just is spoken to disciple what they gonna need to do because Jesus is already uh, on going to leave the world. So. Yeah. And this time Jesus meet to them and tell them to go uh, 
uh, to go to teach and baptize him uh, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And I'll be with you until to the end of the day. So this is what Jesus uh, did by telling, by giving the assignment of the Holy Covenant, the, the Holy Covenant to the disciple to go to let them there. But in this time movement, as we understand in the, in the scripture, as disciples become uh, doors, how can other doors about the Jesus live and other also things, how can we we go without Jesus? There is the problem with disciples when uh, uh, worried for, even they didn't uh, uh, tell, ask the Jesus about them. So this is the story uh, yep. going up in, on, on, the guy, on the mountain of Galilee. Yep, good. Okay, I think everything, you got everything. We'll dig in a little bit more in the learn section, but so from what you say, how you understand the story, is the problem solved? Yes, in this moment, uh, the problem is solved. Uh, solved. We can't say the problem of doubt uh, is solved because the 11 disciples and among and many of them are seeing Jesus as alive. He touched Jesus with the, the with their hand, and so they become understand. They become believe because they see Jesus. They, they touch Jesus, so that problem is solved. And the second one, uh, Jesus gave them the authority, uh, the covenants to do uh, uh, to proclaim the gospel. Yeah. Of course, in this time, maybe they they wait until the Holy Spirit upon to them after the Holy Spirit upon to them they become a strong and and they go they proclaim the gospel that's why I think we uh we get the the we get the the uh, the good news of Jesus Christ yep today yeah, yeah. thank you for that last word today because yeah. it, it makes this is not just something to the 11 disciples. This is now for all of God's people, including you and I. This is our work. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Uh, both problems are solved. His yeah. presence yeah. dispelled remaining doubts. Who would tell the good news? You will. He, yeah. <laughs> he really points at them. <laughs> you will. Yes. Good. All right. Now let's let's apply this. It's a short section, and that's why I think we're going to add more uh, Bible verses after the lead this section. Mm -hmm. but let's uh, let's apply this now to the way we're doing ministry. Um, the main theme of this lesson. What do you think is the main theme? Yeah, to me, I think the main themes in these lessons is receiving the 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 only uh, covenant. Uh, and 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 doing the holy covenant by by preaching the word of God, proclaim the gospel, and and just baptizing them, exactly. uh, and teaching them, baptizing in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of, of the Holy Spirit. Right. By by believing, Jesus right. is he living with us, he not uh, so far with us. Excellent. And I know. Uh, there at Gambella, I know you've been teaching, 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 teaching. Now, and I, I know that you're working on this, you're adding now, especially for the children, the baptism, right? Yeah. So, so you'll be doing this also there at Gambella. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Can you read this answer? Yeah. Jesus flower are commanded to share the gospel and bless it with the task of showing God loves and are assured, assured of the Savior present. Yeah. So really, there's kind of three things in this answer. The command to share the gospel, mm -hmm. um, showing God's love, love, and being assured of the Savior's of the Savior presence. Yeah. So there really are three things. What, uh, one of the things I always like to, to talk about in this verse is clearly make 
just the two things that God, Jesus says to us, go make mm. disciples. Um, mm. And and how do we do that? We do that by teaching and by baptizing, baptizing and teaching. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah, good, good. How about a sin? Um, more specifically, how about our own sin? How do we, how does this show us our own sin? Yeah, things about the sins we can say, uh, sin of, of those things. Sometimes even uh, Jesus saw himself to us in order to go to proclaim the gospel and teach and, and baptize him. Yes, we can't. Uh, yes, we we yes we can't uh, find a, a money question for us saying how can I do that? Uh, maybe I don't have um, all revivals. Maybe I don't have transportation to do this. Go and yeah. teach them. Uh, so this that is a problem. Those kind of is a problem which is uh, it's a sin for us today. In order by sitting in one place, uh, yeah. uh, 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 praise the God only, or preach the gospel uh, in one box, in one one box. So but, that is, I think, is a problem which we need to confess. Yeah, I think what you're saying, if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, we find a lot of. I'll use the word excuses. I think maybe we find some excuse. Oh, I can't go because I don't have transport. Oh, I mm -hmm. can't go because I don't have a Bible. Oh, I can't go because what, what, what? Um, and we sometimes, instead of seeing that as uh, a great challenge, hey, I'm going to overcome this challenge, uh, it sometimes becomes a reason why we can't do the work that God has given us. So, yeah, it can be a sin. It can be a sin. Okay. Good. What is written here? Oh, there's two things. Can you read these A and B? Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A, I may be tempted to think that the Great Commission was only mean, mean for those 11 disciples, not for me. I often fail to proclaim my faith. I sometimes think that I'm all alone in my faith. I forget that Jesus is all away with me. Excellent. Yeah, good. Uh, the first one, I think we talked about mostly, but B also, this is a good point. You know, we mm -hmm. are not alone. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, I'm, there's nobody else in the office here with me, but but I know Jesus is. I don't see him. And yeah. even for you, sometimes, you know, you've got guys around who are helping you with your work, um, but maybe... Maybe they're not always 100% together with you. But Jesus is always with you. So it's important to remember yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. How about the love of God? Where do you see the love of God in this lesson? Uh, we can say the love of God in this lesson. We know uh, Jesus already did. Uh, he did uh, for the assignment what he come uh, for to do yeah. but we can remember also when the time of Jesus arrest by taking to the pilots control pilots uh, we see disciples are disappeared oh, yeah. uh, from and they hiding themselves but it's still Jesus is still fully with love with them when he rest from the dead and, and he chose to show himself to disciples to make them happy, and also to confirm what he been told to them yeah. before he died, uh, before he did. So there is a big love by showing himself to disciples, uh, to our other people also, to let them confirm Jesus uh, is alive. Uh, he, he confirmed what he told, he crashed from the dead after three, three days. Right, right. So there is a big love. It's not only for, for, for those disciples, even for us, because he, he make a he, he strength the disciples, and the disciples he, they go and also he send them to bring the gospel to the world, which is uh, for us today. So that's it's a big thing we can say it's a big love. Yeah, 
I saw so, him they, yeah, himself yep. and confirm, confirm what he, he told before he, he alive. Excellent. Yeah, good answer. You know, the, it, true for you and I, too. Uh, we know that God, Jesus, fulfilled his promises. And he forgives our sins and makes us, I mean, how could I be the one to preach God's word? You know, I look at my own life. Oh, I'm a sinful human being. I'm sinful. But mm -hmm. God forgives our sins and makes us fit yeah. to teach his word. Excellent. Yeah, good answer. I'm just rewording what you're saying. Is, I think we're together on this. Yeah. Okay. Can you read this answer? It's what you yes. said. Jesus loved his disciples so much that he allowed them to see him resurrected. He silenced their doubts. He has given all of us the joy of sharing his love with others. He has given us his word, which is all we need for salvation. Perfect. Good. Exactly what you said. I mean, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. How about something to do? What does God teach you to do in this lesson? Uh, something we need to do in this lesson is taking the 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 only uh, the only command or the only co covenant by going and teach, baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father and them of the the Son and them of the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay. So yeah, proclaiming keep... proclaiming the gospel, teach, 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 baptize the people. Yeah, that is what we need to do. Proclaim teach... the gospel. That's the word you use. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, you can read. Yeah, it teach me to proclaim the gospel boldly, to follow in the disciple put a step as I teach other about the three God. Exactly. Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You've said that many times today, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, lead, we have one question only. <laughs> yeah. So where, how do you share this message? To whom? Who needs to hear this message? Yeah, I think we, uh, I can share this message with the, with the world congregations, especially to those who have ability to teach yeah. and baptize in uh the believers to go 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 and teach teach uh, and proclaim the gospel and make them make sure that their area are are fully are rich with the with the gospel excellent yeah right right um i remember uh, more than one congregation when we were in the united states visiting at christmas time there were several congregations that they put a sign outside where you, when you are leaving church, it says, you are now entering the mission field. So you are leaving church and you are going out. You are now the missionary as you're going out to, to pr proclaim the gospel. And it's for everybody. I think you made a very good point there. Can you read this? Yeah. Okay, uh, we can share this message with anyone who who feel incapable of change, of changing earth, of changing earth and mind, assuring them that God is all the way there to bless their work. Right. So always reminding them God is with you, and as you go and as you do your work as a Christian. God will bless it according to yeah. his wisdom. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody who is maybe shy or maybe afraid. Um, yeah. They need to hear this. All right. So now I promised you we would have more questions um, in, uh, in especially looking at 1 Corinthians. You know, 1 Corinthians is a very important book for us. Um, as Paul is, is beginning the congregation at Corinth, there were really a lot of issues, of, call them problems. There were a lot of problems and a lot of confusion at that place. So uh, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians a little bit. 
um, to get more information. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, 22 to 24. If you will read the first one, then I'll read chapter 2, verse 2, and then you can read chapter 3, verse 11. So uh, we can take turns a little bit. Okay. So let me read uh, verse, uh, I mean, verse 22. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jews demand sign and Greek look for wisdom. But we we preach, but we preach Christ crucified, yep. a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. Great. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Aha, uh -huh. good. So uh, underline, you know, if you, in, at least in your mind, if not in your Bible. We preach Christ crucified. That's a pretty important passage. Then uh, chapter 2, verse 2 says, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Again, pretty important verses, uh, words there. And chapter 3, verse 11, that's yours. Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 11 saying, <clears throat> I said, uh, uh, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid. I mean, or, uh, other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. Excellent. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. It's just hammering that focus for mm -hmm. our preaching. And here's the, here's the, the note about these verses. Can you read this? Yeah, this verse teach that it is very important for the church, for the church to be Christocentric. Good. Christocentric, Christ centers. I mean, Christocentric, Christ centers. The center of the church is the truth that Jesus lived a perfect life in our place, died in our place, and rose again so that. We too, too might, mighty rest. Right. We too mighty rest. Right. So we too might rise from the rise from the dead. Um, yeah. We I don't think this is. I don't think this is new for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not news. You know this already. Yeah. Okay. Um. Another couple passages, 1 Corinthians 1, still in Corinthians. If you read 1, 18 and 21, go back to chapter 1, 18 and 21, and I'll read chapter 2, verse 12. Okay, 18 says, uh, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are uh, preaching precision but to us who are being saved it's uh i know i know any class online um for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are uh who are pre 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 or who are precious but i mean precious but to us who are being saved, it is to power of God. Or right. It's nope, that's, that's good. That's all we need. Just verse 18. Oh, and then 21. Okay, 21. Okay, 21 say, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through his wisdom, did not know him. God was, was placed through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Aha, uh -huh, good. So it's talking about knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You know, um, I, I, I like the word in verse 18. It is the power of God, the message of, of the cross. Um, let me read verse chapter 2, verse 12. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. 
that we may understand what God has freely given us. Again, talking about wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Where does our knowledge come from? Opio, how do you understand knowledge, it? Knowledge, knowledge comes from the eating of the word of God. Right, right. And who makes that word of God to stick in our mind, to make us understand? Holy Spirit and Jesus. Very good. Very good. Can you read this answer? Yes. It is the message rather than the messenger which converts unbelievers. Yep. The people to whom Paul preached did, did not believe because of Paul, but because of the message. It is the same for us today. Right. You know, again, this goes back, Bible, 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 Word of God, Word of God. Yeah. Important. Another couple of, well, there's our two chapters, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. Um, it's kind of a lot to read, but I don't mind if we read it. Um, yeah, it's kind of a lot to read. Uh, go ahead. I, I, let's let's read it. Chapter okay. eight. Can you read all of chapter eight, and then I'll read yeah. chapter nine. Yeah, let let me read it. <clears throat> I say now about food sacrifice about food sacrifices to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge who be of well love built up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. So then about eating food, sacrifices to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. Yep. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods in many lords, yet for us there is, is but one God the Father from whom all things come and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things come and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idol that when they eat sacrifice, sacrificial, I mean, when they eat, Sacrificial food, they think of it having been sacrifices to a God. And since their conscience is weak, it is defeat, de it is defeat. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worries if we do not eat, and not better if we do. Be careful. However, that the exercise of your right does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak consents see you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, when the, when the person be emboldened to eat what is sacrifices to idols, I mean, mm -hmm to eat what is sacrifices to idol, so that this weak brother or sister for whom Christ did is destroyed by your knowledge. When you, you sin against them in this way and wound their weak consents, you sin against Christ. You sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. Okay, so so in chapter 8, Paul is talking about this food sacrifice to idols, whether we eat it or don't eat it. Um, you have to follow your own conscience. Yeah. Um, don't let somebody else tell you what to, what to eat, what you don't eat. Um, you follow what you know in your heart. So, 
Uh, chapter 9 is talking about the rights of an apostle. Um, I'll read this one. Is it okay with you if I read the whole thing? Yeah, good, Pastor. Okay. Chapter 9, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? Even though I may not be, I may not be an apostle to others, surely I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense of those who sit to those who sit in judgment on me. Don't we have the right to food and drink? Don't we have the right to take a believing wife along with us, as do the other apostles and the Lord's brothers and Cephas? Or is it only I and Barnabas who must work for a living? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of the grapes? Who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk? Do I say this merely from a human point of view? Doesn't the law say the same thing? For This is verse 9 now. For it is written in the law of Moses, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. It is, is it about the oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we re reap a material harvest from you? If others have this right of support from you, shouldn't we have it all the more? But we did not use this right. On the contrary, we put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who work in the temple get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Verse 15. But I have not used any of these rights, and I am not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me. I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of this boast. Yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I'm simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and, in, and so not make use of my rights in preaching it. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. That's what you read in chapter 8. Very good. Um, to win as many as possible. Verse 20. To the Jews I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law I became like one not having the law though I'm not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Now, verse 24. Do you not, not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. 
I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So there's a lot of information in 1 Corinthians 8 and 9 uh, what do you think? What do you think, Opio? What do you think is the main point? Yeah, I think uh, the main point is to not judge uh, others for what the he drink or what he eat, and not also uh, eat uh, or not make your brother to fulfill uh, according to what you you do. So that the thing I think is uh, it's a is a some uh, an instruction to uh, poor livings for livings or for food I need to eat or drink I need to drink to be to make uh, to be careful on that if I do I do according to my heart I'm not uh, if if, if what I do will make my brother to fail, I need to be careful to not be uh, a stumbling to my brother. Good. Excellent. 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 Yeah. Very important. We as leaders in the church, we make sacrifices um, to help other people. Yeah, very much. Very much. We do not put laws on people, um, but we teach them Christ's law. Yeah, good. Excellent. Very good. We'll talk more about these things. Can you read uh, this answer when God allows? Yes. When God allows us to, to use our Christian freedom to determine how to act, we should, we should, we should act in just a way that as many as possible might believe. Paul is a great example of this. Great. Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a big question here. Can you read this section? Yes. Uh, having established this principle of what our church should be and what their focus should be, we now look at the principle that show what our church should do. As our church develop and grow, we look for for four things, read the following passage and discuss what each group of birds teach us about church planting. Okay, so we start with Matthew 12, mm -hmm. verse 23 to 25. I'm going to give you that one. Um, if you can read Matthew 12, 23 to 25, I will read 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. Okay, uh, verse 23 to 25, uh, he says, All the people were astonished, where the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the, the Pharisees hear this, they said, It is only by, by principle. The, the 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 prince I mean the the prince of demon that this fellow drive out demon Jesus knew their thought and said to them every kingdom divided against itself will be will be ruined and every city or house all divided against itself will not stand. Okay, great. So what's the point in that passage? Yeah, in this passage, Jesus, uh, I need to be careful to, to address to the Pharisees if their kingdom is already divided, if they cannot believe what Jesus is, they are not the same with Jesus, which means their kingdom is divided. If their kingdom is divided, there is no stand for their kingdom. Yep. 
Okay. So, so you need to, to make yeah, you need, you need to teach the disciple. If the disciple they are doing what the the father uh allow them to teach, they might to they might be angry with Jesus. But if they survive with what Jesus did, means showing they are not a uh, 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 Christian, they are not in the kingdom of God. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, when you talk about being divided or not being divided, I think that's a pretty important point. And I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, and it, it's, really, it's similar. Um, it says this, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought so uh i think you're the one who said i think in your passage you made the point um if we are not to, if we are not together we'll fall and the whole well let's read the answer go ahead Opio. you can read the answer for us okay the answers <clears throat> This, this passage show, show that we want church to stand together in their confession of God's word and the strengthen bound which other who do the same. This means that church which are planted will be united inter internally in their frame belief in, in teaching church in teaching of the of the pure words of God. They will check out others eternally who are who hold to those same to those same teaching or church bodies, congregation, small group, and individual. They will warn those who do not believe these things and separate from them if necessary. Uh huh. So actually, as you are reading this, I'm I'm remembering the lesson we did on Saturday talking about the visible and the invisible church. Mm -hmm. So this talks about the invisible church. We're united internally, according to what's in our heart, but mm -hmm. also externally, you say you believe the same thing as me. Well, we are together. So let's join together in worship yeah. and in the work of the church. So the, the uh, invisible and the visible church, we are together. We are together. Yes. And if we're not... Then what? We separate. No. Yeah, we separate. We separate. Okay, good. That's an important point as you are planting uh, your church and as you are growing the church there at Gambella. Galatians mm -hmm. 6. I'm going to let you read all of these, Opio. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, verse 2, verse 6, and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is great. Okay, let me read it. Thank you. You have it. Yeah, I have it. But I make uh, things in which I need to to correct it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay, he says, I've been established establish this principle of, of what our church should be, should be one, I mean, should be, and what their focus should be. We now look at the principle that show what our church should do. As our church develop and grow, we look for four things, read the following 
passage. Okay. It, did you mean? Uh, let me let me read the the Galatia six one okay. two to two. Yep. I I'm just it. gonna I'm just gonna review what we read in uh, Matthew and in First Corinthians was about mm -hmm. unity, right? Yeah. Now go okay. ahead and read Galatians six. This is the second point. Okay. Galatians 6, verse 1, verse 2, verse 6, and verse 10. Galatia. Galatia 6. No. You need Gal Galatia? Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's right. Okay, Galatia. Okay, let me check Galatia. Okay, six verse one to two to two. Yep. Okay, say, brother and sister, if someone is caught in a sign, you who live by the spirit should destroy that person, that person gentile, but which yourself or you also may be tempted. K each other burden, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, then verse six. And verse six says, "Never trust, never trust the one who receives an instruction, and the word should share all good thing with their instructor." And verse ten. And verse 10 say, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So how do all these passages fit together? What's the main point? Okay. Uh, this... Uh, I think talking about uh, being together and do uh, everything together with the the respect and understanding about the uh, uh, instruction. Good, good. I, I, I'm, I'm specifically for me. I'm looking at the word you used do things together. So yeah. for for example and 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 giving to one another, sharing is was a word that came into my mind, sharing. Um, you know, in the first part, if somebody sins, you share the information for them so they don't stay in that sin. you you correct them. In the second mm -hmm. one, uh, the in verse six, you share all good things with your instructor. That's talking about like food and, mm -hmm. you know, chickens or whatever it is. Um, and then the last one, we are, uh, yeah, just everybody, we we share what we have. Let's read the answer. The, um, go ahead and read this. Can you read? Can you see that? Yes. Okay, uh, in the passage, we see the, that we want church to carry out God's purpose for the church together. Our main purpose is the Great Commission, which we studied in the beginning of this lesson. We also want to provide mutual support in all areas of Christian life. This means that group will do things together that are in line with the clear direction of Scripture. Among the, among the things they will do are help those in need, 
or especially among the family of believer. Use resource, time, talents, and, and treasure to work together and make disciples. Make disciples prioritizing evangelism and, and instruction for the new believer. Right. Okay. Um, helping those in need, using resources to work together. Um, I, okay, good. How would you summarize? Let's give this, can we give this one word, one or two words? Mm. Yeah, I think to summarize, uh, uh, to summarize is the, uh, we can say, uh, the purpose of the uh, the purpose of the church is uh, being together, uh, learning together, support each other together, and 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 and, and just uh, providing a, uh, what we we need. Uh, okay. In 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 the prioritize of. Proclaiming the gospel, may to to make our brother quick, uh, e e equipped for the the proclamation of the gospel. Okay. Uh, so we need to be we need to be together by supporting each others and ah, do what God commands. Good, good. Um, yeah, supporting each other, working together, which is is not only being together in our in our heart in our beliefs, mm -hmm. but working together with our resources. I'll use the word resources, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the set, the third one, number three. Um, Second Timothy chapter three, verse 14 to 16. If you have Second Timothy three, verse 14 to 16, this is, uh, the, the, these are passages about church planting. Second okay, you see it. Okay, 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 16. Thank you. I say it. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learn it. Okay. Is that up to 16? Okay, yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay, let me continue. Uh, 15 says, and out from and finds out from and, and finds you have known the only scripture which are able to make you wish for salvation through faith in Christ and through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God written and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the service of God may be true, equipped for every good work. Okay, um, good. I think this is, uh, I can, I think I have an idea where this is going about what makes us to be together. Verse, let me read uh, Hebrews 10, at verse, starting at verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Verse 25, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So, what makes us to be together? We talk about being together. We talk about working together, sharing our resources. What makes us to be together? Yeah, the things make us to be together is what we learn. Is is the what is what is the, the thing we learn from the the words of God? Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Let's read the answer here. Go ahead. The passage shows the importance of church gathering 
regularly around wars and sacraments. The mark of the church is that people gather around the means of grace. This particular point is indispensable. Ind indispensable is dispensable. Believers do not exist apart from the word and sacrament. The word regularly is also key. A new church plan may meet irregularly. It is important to encourage them to set a consistent time and place so that so all are so all are fit and believer grow. Yeah. Um uh... Uh, let me let me confirm this. The word indispensable. Does everybody understand that word? What does that mean? Indispensable. This point about gathering around the means of grace. This particular point is indispensable. What does that mean? Yeah, it's not clear to me. Yeah, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a very common word. Uh, indispensable means you can't. You can't ignore it. You must not ignore it. It has mm -hmm. to be there. The means of grace, the word of God, baptism, uh, even Lord's Supper, those things have to be there. If you don't have them, Martin Luther, Martin Luther says, you don't have the word and sacraments, you don't have a church. So um, indispensable means that has to be there. Um. So I was thinking about your group there in Gambella. If, if I remember right, you said recently that you're not meeting in the same place that you were meeting before because there's been some problems have come in. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So my question about that is, so have a lot of your members come now to the new place no they are coming to the new place the problems uh of the of the first place as i told you before uh oh. the the previous uh temporary uh worship uh, hours been filled down by the rent and wind oh, yeah. and uh after after the couple of months also uh the insecurity problem and in, in gambilla uh, is rich around the uh, in the land of uh, yeah. our church because behind behind our church there in uh, the church land there are some area which is called uh, near ethnic group uh, yeah. to them for showing their culture so if the problem happened there on the border those uh -huh. who are around here they will come to fight with the our community and that place become a world place yeah. and which is is not able for for human uh, to stay there yeah yeah so uh, as we understand and that and the moment uh, we uh, we find uh, some place from our members brother, members and he sits uh, some area and which uh, we we build a temporary uh, worship house, and now we are a uh, worship there and uh, with our with all our members. Okay, good. They are coming and doing that. Like okay, but good. But but as as a as a, 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 a land of uh, someone, uh, it's not belong to the church. Oh, so yeah. we don't know it any time. The owner may yeah. he, he need it. We need to leave that place. That is why we are afraid. Maybe have got wills to get some uh, some place for the church, even in, in in the town, even by buying. Also, I yeah. think it's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so okay. Good. Um, I'm looking at these verses, Second Timothy and Hebrews. What would you say is the thing that brings people together? From these verses. Uh, what do you say, Pastor? What is the thing that brings people together? What causes them to be together and to share together whatever they have? What causes them to do that? 
Yeah, yeah. As we we understand according to this uh, verse, the thing make us together is the the word of God, the word of Jesus, and and beyond that, we can say the uh, the sacraments and the baptisms. Uh, yeah, and that is the thing which is make us together. Right. The word of God, the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, as we find it in the word of God and in the sacraments. Very good. Okay, excellent. I think we're together, Opio. Let's look at this last one. This is number four. We talked about being together. We talked about sharing things together. And we talked about the word of God brings us together. If you read Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 13, I'll read Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Oh, okay. Let me read it if it's all. Okay, Ephesians 4, 11 says, uh, so Christ himself gave the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teachers yep. to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become martial attaining to the the world measure of the fullness of Christ. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Acts chapter 20 also talks about the same topic. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Mm -hmm. Be shepherds. That's an important word. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. So what's the point? What does this have to say about planting churches? Yeah, planting churches is, uh, according to this scripture, as we understand these churches is, is church which is uh, brought it from Jesus, uh, his blood. He brought us according to his blood to us, and we need uh, to do uh, um, the shift, uh, shepherdings or to teach uh, the church, uh, yeah, to teach the church, proclaim the gospel, yeah, as 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 church give authority to us in the church. Excellent, good. I, I love the word you used, shepherding. We must be shepherding uh, mm -hmm. as the church gives authority. So, so God uses people to build his church. He uses he puts people in uh, leadership positions like yourself, like Otong, like Alfred, mm -hmm. like Ochala, like Achotpach, like Marwajok. You guys, you have a group of leaders there. Let's read this answer. Uh, what this what this has to say? Do you see? Okay. This? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. He say, we want church to call qualified local men to serve. The passage mentioned above and numerous other in the New Testament show the importance of leadership. All Christians are called to be personal witness as as praise of God. 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, a gathered group of believers designed, designed, designed some from among them to be their representative as those who teach and preach publicly. Okay. Excellent. I just, just what what you said, and I think you made a very good point that I wasn't thinking about, but you are a leader according to the authority that your people have given. And, you know, they they might say this one is the preacher, this one is the secretary of the congregation, this one is the 
the the um, organizer of the congregation. So we follow those things. So four principles, as I'm in my mind, I'm writing them down. We are united in mm -hmm. our in our teaching. Um, mm -hmm. We are united as we work together, sharing with one another. Um, mm -hmm. So that's two. Number three. What's number three? What makes us to be united? Sacraments. Ah, okay, yeah. We're, we're united as we hear the word and sacraments. We use the word and sacraments together. And then this one, we're united uh, as God uses the leaders, mm -hmm. right? As God uses the leaders. Okay. And that's it. Those are the four uh, big points about... Uh, church planting, we want to be united. We we must be united. Um, yeah, I think just in, in my own mind, I've written down uh, those four points. We are united. We are sharing. Um, we use the word of God together. And we follow our leaders. So that's great. That's great. Uh, the next class for this course, um, we're going to take questions about biblical uh, questions about church planting, number one and number two. That's for this course, Saturday morning. We'll okay. meet the same time we met today. Um, that's nine o'clock Eastern Africa time, which Am I right? Again, I just always want to check. Am I right? That's three o'clock on your on your clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Then on Saturday also at lunchtime, which is, I think you said seven a.m. Your time. Yeah. Uh, it will be twelve o'clock noon, my time in in Malawi. Um, oh. We'll meet together with Frank on that day. Yeah, good. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a different course. So that's that that will be a different thing. Um, Saturday, April 20th. And let's close with a prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for wow, just this wonderful opportunity to be together. Opio and I, uh, I think we have a lot of the same ideas and that's not by accident, because these ideas are not our own. They come from you in your holy word. And both Opio and I, together with all of his leaders there at Gambella, we're reading your word regularly. And we ask you, just continue to send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us so that we continue to grow in our unity, in our understanding of one another. I thank you, Lord, for Opio, uh, the, way he, the way he understands your word the way he brings it to his congregation, and not just his congregation, but his family. He has a lot of people in that house, and, and they are all seeing how he follows you and learning from him uh, who you are and what great things you've done. Help us all to con continue to do the work you give us uh, faithfully and keep our focus on our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we preach him uh, as the one who lived in our place, who died in our place, and rose to give us a new life, all for your glory. Amen. Amen. So I will send you again the student guide. I'll send you the Zoom um, information. Uh, that should be Thursday, Friday, probably Friday. I'll send that to you. So we meet together on Saturday. Okay. Thank you, Opio. God's blessings on your day, and um, we will continue to discuss by WhatsApp. Yeah, good. Super. Good. So, so, you, our next, so our next class will be uh, 3 o'clock before now? No, it won't be today. Uh, Frank said let's start on next Saturday. Next Saturday? Yeah, that's the 20th. Okay. Yeah, so you and I, you and I, just the two of us, will meet in the morning on Saturday. 
yeah, and yeah. Then and then uh, we'll meet with Frank at lunchtime on Saturday. Yeah. Good, good. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, what what about the the proposal? Uh, did you have a, a, a question on that? No. The, the, yeah. Um, no, I don't. 